Hello and welcome to the Ken 7 podcast and uh, joining me to have a little preview of the Cardiff game is the Anfield Raps, Josh Sexton and Scott Elliott. Gentlemen, welcome. There are lots to talk about. Um, we'll talk about the game, obviously, because that's really important and it's exciting because we've not had a game, feels like, forever. But um, we, we've just had deadline day and uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, what happened. Josh, I'll come to you first. Obviously, we signed Lewis Diaz, 50 million quid. Nothing's more exciting than finding, uh, signing a, a, a big player in a forward position. Uh, I'm sure Rob Gutman uh, hasn't had any sleep for the last week. And he's, he's been way too busy. I was trying to get him on a podcast and he wasn't having any of it. He, just, <laughs> he was here, there and everywhere getting dragged from pillar to post. But um, yeah, I mean, what do you think, mate? You're obviously a massive Liverpool fan. You, you work in the in the industry. What, what do you think about such a big signing? Yeah, don't worry. We we were finding it hard enough to book Rob, book Rob as well, so you weren't you weren't <laughs> alone in that. Um, no, but you, you'll always get out of bed for a transfer. No, it is it is exciting, like you say, and, and you you want to sort of you know it's an interesting thing when you, when you work in the industry as well as being a fan because when you when you're being a fan, ultimately you know all, all you want to do is Liverpool to win trophies, you know Liverpool to win games and that kind of thing. But the signings like Luis Diaz will hopefully put Liverpool on the way there, and you can understand the excitement that other people have around it, and and you can you can sort of see the excitement tangibly when when you do the Anfield wrap because people just love a transfer and love a big transfer in particular in particular and it was it was a strange one wasn't it because I was I was asleep as as the news broke but then you know when you when you sort of wake up and, and see the news and you get straight to work it's it's just that exciting it's always that exciting when Liverpool sign a big player and it's always that exciting for Liverpool to be looking to the sort of medium and long term as well with these kind of signs. And um, Scott you know what how excited were you as a fan that we'd, we'd sign Luis Diaz? Yeah I mean obviously we were pushed to transfer weren't we? It seems like that from the uh, Spurs Spurs business. Um, it's an exciting transfer. You know what? I was looking back at Liverpool game and I was thinking, I can't remember him actually doing that well. And then when you look back after we've signed him, he actually probably done better than I thought from my first memory. It looks like he can beat a player one-on-one. And you've also got, a, you know, you look back at Jota at Wolves and you'd probably have the same same reaction. Um, but coming up, coming to Liverpool, obviously he's going to be with better players. We're going to have more of the ball. It, you know, he's going to get more chance to attack and do his thing. Um, and the bits that I've looked at him since we signed look look quite impressive. He can beat a player one on one, which is crucial. I think um, I think one of the things that I love about it is it gives us loads of options, doesn't it? Um, you know, a, a lot of people are talking about the fact that. He plays on the left and that's Sadio Mane's position. But, you know, you, you kind of forget Sadio Mane in his first season played on the right before we had Salah and he was absolutely outstanding. So you could see you, we've just got permutations everywhere now. It gives us a lot of flexibility. Sadio could play right, Luis Diaz can play left, Mo could play through the middle or Jota or whatever. So it's just changed the, the whole uh, outlook of our forward line. Do you agree, Scott? Yeah, yeah, dynamics have changed, and that's what Jurgen likes, doesn't he? Yeah, people chopping and change. You see in games, like say, where Mo will go up front, someone will drop onto the right, and there's options. Even lately, with the players out, you know, Alex has played up top on the right a little bit. Yeah, there's so many good options. I'm not, I still haven't quite worked out whether I prefer Jota on the left or down the middle, you know, because he's so good in the air and he's, he's, he's good in both positions. But there's certain moments in games where I just I haven't quite decided what I think his best position is. Not that it matters, but you know when you sort of relate, you sort of go Mo on the right, uh, Sadio on the left, but Jota I, I can't quite decide, and, and that's a good thing because other teams won't know where he's going to play. Because I also think when Sadio's played down the middle, he's done really well as well. You know he's got a good eye for goal. Yeah, you know, I think I think he's a big threat as a striker, Sadio. Completely. Um... <laughs> Josh, how devastated were you when we never got the Carvalho uh, signing over the line? I mean, it was it was frenetic that last hour, wasn't it? It was unbelievable. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Like you use the word devastating, and he was a, he's a player that I'd probably not even heard of before that week. To be honest, <laughs> I, like I, I can't I can't claim to have been watching Fulham week in week out really, but but by all means, you know from from what Fulham fans have been saying, he was he was a dead exciting player, and looks like one of the more exciting players in the sort of championship and. 
he fit, it felt like he fitted the mould of, of what Liverpool, you know, wanted a player to to be able to do. You know, he's, he's not got that sort of, you know, yard of pace, for example, but he can really press and those kind of things. These were the sort of things you were hearing from, from the Fulham side. So it felt like in that sense, he had all the attributes to be a Liverpool player and he fits the age profile as well, to be honest. I mentioned with the, the Luis Diaz signing that it feels like a signing for for the medium and long term for Liverpool and Carvalho felt felt like the same, really. felt like someone who, you know, would go back to Fulham for, for the rest of the season, but then from there would have would potentially have a massive future at Liverpool. So hopefully it's the one that we get over the line. I think that's what everyone was sort of consoled themselves with by the time the, the windows slammed shut weren't there was the um was the, it'll, it'll still be one we can get done before the summer hopefully so here's here's hoping that is the case yeah I mean I've just watched the press conference and they asked Jürgen about it and it seemed Jürgen doesn't normally he's quite guarded but he he, he basically just said we will see obviously we're interested in him and we'll see how it goes it didn't sound like it was dead in the water it certainly sounded like something was going on Josh um Scott you you obviously had some you know, Harvey was at Fulham for a good few years. I'm guessing Fabio Carvalho was there when Harvey was there and perhaps they played together. You know, what did you think about the the, the fact that we looked like we were going to sign him and uh, yeah. do you think it's definitely one we should pursue? Oh, I've known Fabio. I've seen Fabio for four years playing. Harvey played with him for four years, you know, plus with England. So I know him really well. I know him as a person and I know him as a as a player. Um, yeah, definitely one to pursue. Look, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Even if it's agreed in the summer that we pay the eight million that's been touted around, if they're the numbers, it's, it is a no-brainer. If he comes in as a Liverpool player, yeah, you know, you, you're doubling your money overnight, aren't you? As such, and you've got him potentially for fifteen years. You know, fourteen years. He's a he's a he's a good player. He's a good what player. Sort of player is it, Scott? Um, well, to be fair, for Fulham, you know, in the youth games, he he sort of played as a number ten. Right, um, but he can play as a number eight. I, th- I suspect he can play a, a sort of box to box midfielder. He's definitely more attacking than defensive. Um, technically, he's good. He's got moments of brilliance in him. You know, to be fair at Fulham, some games he w- he would go missing. Other games, it'd be breathtaking. So he 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 was very. You know, I would I would say he was quite inconsistent in in what he produced over the four years that I saw him, but I haven't seen him for a couple of years playing and he's obviously developed a lot more now. And when you see him for Fulham, he looks like he's now got more consistency. But the way he moves with the ball and his hard work, you know, it's there. And and he's a very, very lovely, humble lad. He's, he, he really is a lovely lad. Um, great personality. Um, yeah, yeah. Harvey speaks very highly of him as well. He's a, he's it doesn't sound to me like you're surprised that he's had this meteoric rise at all. I mean, he's got into the first team and he's grasped it with both hands. He's scored goals and, and, and had assists this season. Um, is that would that be accurate? Yeah, I mean, look, I look, I look at no disrespect to the Fulham first team, but for me, it's a uh, it's a good championship side, a very, very low Premier League side, right? Um, if we're being honest. And Fabio, Fabio, if he gets consistency and keeps his work rate up, he'll outgrow that team very quickly for me. I was surprised that you, you said that he was he, he he was more of an eight or a ten. I I the clips I'd seen him, he seemed more like a like a he could play in Mo's position, you know, off the right. Is that, is that not right? Um, he, pr- he probably could, but you've got to remember the championships are miles away from the Premier League. It really is in terms of levels, right? So Fulham, he's playing in the top, obviously the best team in the championship, right? They're they're dominating games. They're they're attacking teams. You know that you can see by the amount of goals they've scored and the amount of chances they've had, how many goals they're getting. Now you see Fulham in the Premier League. They're not even getting a tenth of what they're doing in the championship, right? So for me, Fulham right now are too good for the champ, not not quite good enough or or just about survive Premier. And that's been the case that yeah, as as proven where they're up and down. Um a totally open game, you know, space you you look at you know, Harvey, I, I look at the experience from we had a black man. The games are much more open, even though they're more physical. Premier League teams are much more organized, not as easy to get in behind. You know, you've got real holding midfielders, for example, 
where Fab's dropping into that space a lot of the time. You know, you'll have a Fabino or or a um, Kante in there, and they'll be shielding that defence. In the championship, is very much flat lines, and and a lot of teams don't have the legs or the or the, or the shape to to have that holding enforcer. And I think in the Premier League, you find that a lot harder. But he's still only look, he's he's nineteen, isn't he? He's still he's still a young lad. Yeah, yeah. yeah as, as we said before, and you've got to look at players what they can be at 22, 23. and he's got the potential to be a top player. If you're enjoying this video so far, please show your support for the Ken7 channel by clicking the subscribe button, the like button, and also clicking the bell for future notifications. If you could also share the video on your Twitter and Facebook account, that will show YouTube's algorithm that you like our content. Do you know about Ken7 merchandise? The link is in the description of this video. We have premium fanware for fans covering Liverpool, Celtic and Scotland. And it's fanware for young and old. So we have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, caps, mugs, you name it, we've got it. Just something else to remember, every purchase that is made on our website, we donate to the Marina Dalgalish Appeal. So you're helping a great cause as well. Um, obviously, we just had this long break. Um, some of the players have been on holiday. Um, which brings, I think, personally, its own problem. It's a, there was a rhythm problem there because they've been on hold, they've not been training. Of course, they're rested, but I think sometimes we struggle after we have a bit of a break. Then you've got lads who've been in Brazil, you've got lads who've been at AFCON, two lads who are still at AFCON, people coming back from uh, from injuries like Harvey, like Thiago. Josh, do you, do you, think, do you think that Sunday could be a bit of a struggle for us? because of all those factors that I've just mentioned? I don't think so necessarily. I think what you tend to see, particularly with the Liverpool players who are going on holiday these days, is that they, they tend to sort of group up. And I, and I don't think that's sort of like an undeliberate thing. I think I think generally they tend to group up more on holidays, like you've seen, um, I think Henderson and Virgil were in Dubai together, weren't they? I know a few, a few of the other lads have been in, in, in Dubai as well. Ox, Milner and Robertson were all sort of spotted playing golf together there, weren't they? And I think sometimes the club, if, if they've got the, the staff, will send out like a trainer or send like someone who can work on a training plan with those guys over over out there. So I think that's the sort of thing that you'd imagine was was going on to some degree, uh, even during this break, although I, I imagine the priority would have been on rest. But also, to be honest, I could see a situation in which the team that starts on Sunday is just a team more of lads who, who have been in and around Kirby for, for the past few weeks and and have been training and that kind of thing and, and haven't been uh, away on holiday. I know there was a there was a behind closed doors game, there was the Wrexham game obviously which which Harvey scored and got an assist and there's been sort of a behind closed doors game going on, on there and there'll be a few of those lads I imagine who would be involved against Cardiff. Um, I think Leighton Clarkson was another one who was who was involved in that and I could I could see somebody like him getting a game. So I think Klopp will sort of go for the lads who, who he's had around, but then also maybe, you know, the ones who, who have been away on internationals, because as you say, they're the ones who, who will have the rhythm as opposed to the ones who've been away and been rested. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll do we'll do a, a, a team lineup prediction in a, in a little while. Just looking forward to, to Cardiff. They're currently 20th in the Championship, if you didn't know. Uh, they've scored 31 goals and they've had 48 uh, against, which is a difference of minus seven. Um, they've won the last two games and then they lost the two games before that. And in the last round, they beat Preston. So the form isn't great. The form's a bit patchy. The, the top goal scorer is a guy called Kiefer Moore, who's got five goals. So the, they don't seem to have any real attacking outlet, which which could threaten us. Scott, do you, do you think this is a, 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 a banana skin or potentially just a, you know, a good run out for the lads? Um, you got you got to sort of give Cardiff a bit of credit, but I, th- I think it's going to be a a good run out for the lads. You know, it's blowing away the cobwebs. It's like you touched on, yeah, and then we had this discussion this week because the Leeds game has just um, just been rearranged for four days before the cup final, and I, and I, when when that came up, I was a bit like on our group. I was like, yeah, it's all bloody four days before. But as the boys said, said look, we we sort of got rhythm and we play better with a bit of rhythm. Yeah, when you have a big break, like you see people like Fab, and he sort of needs a, one or two games to get back up to that level. Um, so uh, I, I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be a straightforward, you know, win. 
Okay, Josh, um, let's have a little chat through the team lineup. What um what what do you think? Do you do you think we're gonna be starting from the back? Do you think it'll be Keller, Keller in goal or do you think Ali will play? I think he'll he'll go with Keller here. Yeah. I, I imagine he'll he will sort of look to do a similar thing to what he did with with Shrewsbury because I think that was that was almost like an informed behaviour from from Klopp and I actually I, when I was watching that game I thought back to the the Shrewsbury away game last time when they managed to to get a replay out of us and and how that team was was probably just a little bit too rotated to be honest and there weren't enough of, of the sort of main you know senior lads in, in in there making sure that you sort of had that that spine throughout it so. I think I think he could do something similar where he mixes and matches it with some of some of the you know the the stronger lads in, in the side and then a couple of the the younger lads as well. But maybe maybe not quite as many young lads as he had in the first leg. Okay. Um, do, 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 do you think it'll be uh, normal back four? I, I, I could see a situation in which Connor Bradley starts. To be honest, just because I think Trent's going to have so much football after after this. Um, so I, I could see Connor Bradley starting, particularly with Nico going out on loan. Now, otherwise, I'd have had Nico as, as a shoe in there. Um, I could I can see Virgil Van Dijk and probably Joe Gomez um, yeah. getting a start. I, th- I think it's time for us to start now ramping up Joe Gomez's minutes. Otherwise, I think you're going to quite quickly get into a situation where you know we we keep speaking about rhythm, but Joe is just going to be completely out of rhythm. And I know I know you know there's a certain degree to which he's just behind Matip and Kanati in the pecking order at the moment. But I think you need to. You need to keep him having that incentive to to you know want to stay fit and want to stay in rhythm and that kind of thing and keep and keep him hungry and training. And I think it's about time he was sort of getting some minutes. So I quite like to see him start. And then I think probably Simicas I'd go with at left back. Moving forward, do you, what do you think the shape of the midfield will look like, Scott? That's a tough one. I mean, if it was me, it did say Thiago's definitely not ready. I'm seeing a press conference. Thiago's uh, not ready. I thought he might, you know. Or hoping he might be ready Basically, to get a few minutes. To give you an update: Thiago's not ready. Harvey looks ready, as which you'll know. Um, and Divock has trained today, I think, for the first time, so he won't be ready. And Nabby's oh. fine. And Nabby's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I would expect, yeah, I would think Nabby Nabby might start. Maybe um, he's come we'll back. Nabby up in the press conference loads. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. He okay. was. Yeah. That's that's fine. So. Yeah, maybe Naby, Hendo, Stuart, Bell. I don't know how Fab is. Um, so I would expect Naby, Naby to be involved there. Mm-hmm. Again, don't know Fab. They're such a good selection, isn't there? Curtis could do, you know, still more minutes, stay sharp. Um, and it depends. He, he might look at something to prepare for Thursday as well, because only four days, isn't it, for the Leicester game, which on paper is a bit, you know, obviously a lot more important. Yeah. Yeah. The um the Curtis shout is a good shout. I think uh, Josh Curtis's form has been fantastic in recent weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he just seems to be growing in sort of physical stature game by game now. And I know there's been quite a deliberate strategy from the club to coach more of the sort of I, I always call it the darker arts, but it's almost just it's almost just that sort of like that graft and that defensive energy that you need to be a part of this Liverpool side. And it's not to say that Curtis never had that. It's just I think you need a lot of it to, to be to be particularly playing the number eight role in this Liverpool side, and that's where. That's where clearly Klopp and Pep Linders and, and the other coaches of the club see Curtis's role as being. But I think he's 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 took to that so well in in recent weeks. And there's been a few games where where he's been you know the best player on the pitch among some some of our you know like top top senior lads. So I think he he continues to grow game by game. And I'd, I'd love to see him starting on Sunday as well. Josh, I'll stick with you, Josh. Move the the forward line. Um, Luis Diaz hasn't even met Jurgen Klopp yet, so he's not. He's, he's not going to be available to selection. He possibly might train tomorrow. I expect him to be there today. But yeah, Jürgen sort of basically said he's not going to be out for four months, um, but we need to ease him in. He's never played with us before. We play in a very specific way and he'll need to learn that. Um, so looking forward, I mean, we've got, uh, you, you expect Jota to play, Josh, yeah? Yeah, I'd be expecting Jota to be one of the first names on the team sheet for this year. And then, Beyond that, it, it, it sort of gets a bit tougher, doesn't it? We had the same conundrum around the Arsenal games in terms of, you know, can you play Minamino on, on one of the sides or is he better through the middle? Um, I'd, I'd imagine he'd be trying to get Bobby Firmino on, well, on Bobby's the Bobby's been on all day, hasn't he, I think? Yeah. He wasn't in the Brazil squad, so I would think he'd start as well. Yeah, I'd, 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 be, I'd be expecting him and Jota to get a start and then, and then it just sort of it becomes which one you pick from, from the other three. Obviously, Chamberlain did a really good job 
in the last few games on the right there. So you'd imagine he'd be one of the first you go to. But then, you know, if, if Jürgen's saying that Harvey is, is fit enough for a start, then there's no reason that Harvey couldn't start on the right either. Although I'd, I'd probably be more inclined to sort of see him, him from the bench and ease back into it, given the sort of length of the layoff. Mm, OK. Uh, score prediction, gents. What, Josh? It's, it's always a tough one, isn't it? Because it's, it's always a bit of an unknown and I don't think I could have predicted that, that Shrewsbury score by any means. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Car- Cardiff scored again. Funnily enough, when you said that it was Kiefer Moore who starts up front for them, I sort of remembered his, his performances for Wales in, in, in the in the Euros and, and I just remember him being a massive grok. So um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they scored again. I, I'll, I'll go with another 4-1 to Liverpool. That seems about right. Scott? Um, yeah, I would go 3-0, 4-0. Oh, to nil. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, gents, listen, thank you very much for uh, for your time. Um, I appreciate you really busy. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Gents, thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you soon.